My fellow McCarricans, we've recently experienced a phenomenon. A couple weeks ago there was a time change, and now for the first time in human history, everyone in the world is in the same time zone, that being the Twilight Zone. Now you may find yourself unable to leave the house to buy materials, but I'd like to offer you some alternatives. Now, I purchased these materials all from a thrift store back before we entered the Twilight Zone, but you could probably rummage through your house and find something usable. Oh look, I have nothing else to say. Almost immediately upon entering this store, I spotted my skirt fabric. It was a big golden tablecloth. I also found a blood red pillowcase suitable to make those little accents on her sleeves. Okay, so now I just need to find something blue. Graduation gown. I've never had one of those. It's tempting, but a little cheap looking. Okay, this is nice. What is this? Ooh, a little mother of the bride action. Yes, please. So I'm trying to convince myself to like this pillow so that I have an excuse to buy it because really all I need is this cord right here. You know, I'm going to recover it with a different fabric. At the time of this particular shopping trip, there were only a grand total of three cases of you know what in the United States, but I had a feeling that they things would get worse, so I decided to stock up on fabric as to not have to leave my house very much, so I got this in case I needed to make a Rapunzel costume. Now here are all the items I have to work with during my social distancing project. Now since you're in a vulnerable state of boredom and have no choice but to watch what I make you watch, watch me try on this Mother of the Bride outfit. And now let me style it a bit cuter before I cut it to shreds. I sincerely thank your eyes for their service. Now fold your tablecloth in half, line your heels up with the bottom hem, and then mark where your waist is. Use a book, ruler, or any straight object to trace a straight line, and then cut across. And with that excess fabric, you're going to make a waistband. I love the term waistband because I tend to think most bands are a waist. Except the Jonas Brothers, obviously. Fold both edges of the waistband into the center, and then fold the whole thing in half and iron down. Cut the waistband to fit your waist exactly, and then pleat the skirt until it fits perfectly inside that waistband. I recommend pinning down the edges and the middle first and then working on all the pleats in between. Now push those pleats to take a ride down the hazardous highway that is your sewing machine. Now hooks and eyes are usually a bad combination which I learned when I was 12. I had to go to the ER, long story, but in this situation hooks and eyes are perfect for closures. That's two separate words, for and closures, not foreclosures. Foreclosures are never good. Now slice the outer seams of your pants and then separate both pant legs leaving you with two large quantities of fabric. Now summon all the perfection you have inside of you and pour it all out into making a perfectly symmetrical bodice. Trace it onto both layers of fabric and cut it out. Now ideally for this bodice, you will want three layers, but the innermost bodice can be of any fabric you choose, just a scrap you have laying around, perhaps your brother's pillowcase. Now take the scrappy bodice and one of the other bodice pieces and layer, layer them, is that my foot? Did I use my foot for that? Now layer the two pieces on top of each other and sew multiple straight lines onto your bodice. If you struggle with straight, there's a great community. I mean, you can use a cookie pan. Trace that pan multiple times to make channels for your boning, and then if your tripod falls over, pick it up and- Okay, hold on, this would make a great, like, meme. Like a nice meme. Like, not funny, though. When my best friend at rock bottom. If you're struggling with how many channels to make, I made about as many as musicals I've been in, so maybe you could try that. And then I noticed a bug. Hey! Um, what's up with you? I taught him to jump hurdles. You wanna maybe like play Scrabble? Bananagrams. I have Catan. We could just look at each other. Harsh. Now I typically use thicker zip ties than this, but this was all I had on hand and I was not about to leave the house for something arbitrary, so I shoved these in and it worked fine. And then guess who came crawling back? And when I say crawling, I don't mean it in like a humiliating derogatory term, I just mean like Crawling is a bug's primary form of transit. Now take your remaining fancy bodice piece and smother your boned piece with it. Now we have pinned the boned layer to the not boned layer. Right sides together and we are going to sew all around the edges. Now time for some deepish thoughts. I like social interaction. I have lots of friends. But needless to say this quarantine has been a little bit of a turd. Has it made me lonely? No. I've found plenty of ways for social interaction without humans. Now has this quarantine made me a tad psycho? possible. Hey, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but a little bit of your brain is seeping out of your head. It's a bald eagle. You can tell it's a bald eagle because if it has a dark body and a light head, it's definitely a bald eagle. Or a competitive bodybuilder. Somebody's trying to dunk their body. Ew. Now I thought this swan here was trying to bond with me, but turns out it was just trying to steal my Starbucks. Hey, have you ever heard of social distancing? Hashtag fake friends. Black swans. Hey, have either of you guys ever met Mila Kunis or Natalie Portman? You have? I do not believe you. I think I speak turtle. Um, hydro flasks. It's like a dog because, park. Um, 
but for bros. And I haven't always gotten along, but these are desperate times. Oh, 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 oh. Times are tough. Have some more. Now I muted the audio for this because I was obnoxiously screaming. This was like one of the most exciting moments of my life. I saw an owl in person and I was blown away. I literally called four people to tell them after this. None of them really cared. Come to Hogwarts with me. Hey! Now sew all along the top and bottom of all three of those bodice pieces and leave the sides open so you can flip it inside out. Now I took a pretty long break from sewing after this because something happened when I went on a run, other than playing in the sprinklers. I just went on a run. It was a successful run. You know how I know it was successful? Because I feel like there are steak knives wedged in my kneecaps. Which is irrelevant. The thing I've been trying to get to is the fact that on my way back from my run, I noticed that this little scooter I have clashes with my camper. It didn't match my camper or my lawn chairs. It it just looked really out of place, so of course I painted my camper to match it. Not my whole camper, mind you. I decided that a big swirly streak along the side would be enough to tie in the pink. I think there is, how you say, no going back now. Mm -hmm. somber tone, make the back of your bodice by completing the same steps as you did for the front of your bodice, but slice it down the middle, then add boning on each edge. Now lay the back panels on the front panel, right sides facing each other, and pin and sew along the edges. Oh, quick break to share with you another project I've had during this social isolation is this denim top that I made off of the pant legs I cut off of my Harley Quinn shorts. Now pin the straps together and try it on yourself, making adjustments if needed, then sew them in place. Now for a donor transplant. This little rope will be transplanted from this stylishly deceased pillow onto our bodice. But first the sleeves. Cut out two pieces of fabric that are the size and shape of a headboard that would be on an American Girl doll scale queen sized bed. Now draw some little triangles along the bottom and top so that it looks like the mouth of a baby shark doo doo doo. Now pinch, pin, and sew the edges of those little triangles to give your sleeve a puffed appearance. The nice thing about repurposing old garments when you're sewing is that a lot of the times there's already hemmed edges, like the edges of these sleeves. So I decided to be a little cheater and utilized them to make cuffs on my sleeves. And I didn't have to hem my skirt either because the tablecloth I used already had hemmed edges. Repurposing fabrics is not only cost effective and anti-wasteful, but it's also pretty convenient. Now go rip down your mom's curtains. Tell her it's for a good cause. To make those little red teardrops on her sleeve, I feel weird saying red teardrops. It sounds like you're crying blood, which is possible. Jesus did it. Wait, I don't think he did. No, I think he just sweated it. Anyway, that's why you should always read your Bible, kids, because you can't just trust everything a YouTuber tells you. I digress. I used heat and bond. I ironed it onto a strip of fabric, then cut those strips into teardrop shapes, then peeled the paper backing off. Due to the rounded shape of the sleeves, I had to be a little creative to iron them on. Then I headed over to my window, and noticed that Alvin was ready for his morning snack, which consisted of a pretzel today, and I realized I should really get him some squirrel feed. I just smiled. I'm smiling. So I geared up and ventured out to Petco, where I realized I don't think there's such a thing as squirrel feed, but I had a good time anyways. Yeah, this is making me think I need to do a Rapunzel costume next. I'm confused about what I'm saying right now. Aww, all alone in a cage? I know how that feels. This really expensive parrot, according to some of the employees, had been alone in there for almost a year. I guess all of his siblings were bright colors like blue and got bought up really quick, leaving him by himself because he's not an interesting enough color. So, long story short... Yeah, we all need companionship during this difficult time, so when one of the employees came over and asked if I needed help with anything, I said... Could I have one of that parakeet? The Quaker? Yes. We're not going to talk about how much money I spent that day because I felt bad for that bird and also for myself, but quarantining when you live alone in a little RV can drive you to do unorthodox things. And I think this bird, which I named Garion, is going to ensure that I don't try to socialize with swans anymore, which is great because swans are kind of dangerous. After attaching my sleeves to my bodice, I sewed a strip of red fabric into one big spaghetti noodle, then cut it up into multiple macaroni noodles. Then I folded them all in half, then pinned and sewed them along the inside edges of the back two panels of my bodice. Then I laced a ribbon through, which was gray. Not my first choice, but you know, I'm not leaving the house anymore. And then 
then I was done, until I looked at a picture of Snow White and realized she had a collar. After rummaging through my supplies, I realized that my options were this ribbon or some toilet paper shreds that I still had left. So I used this ribbon. So I pleated... Garion, I'm trying to do a voiceover, honey. I pleated, pinned, and sewed it into a semicircle, then pinned the front two edges to the front two edges of my bodice. Then I took a break to get some sunshine and also make Garion a new toy. It's sort of my new addiction, just making him things to climb on. And finally, to add volume to the skirt, I found this little scrap from my Ariana Grande costume, cut it in half, and put a little bit on each side of the inside of my skirt. Then I thought I was done, and I guess I left time lapse running. I was literally just about to film the grand reveal, and I realized that I never made a bow for my hair, so... Cut and fold a piece of red fabric the size of your small intestine. Sew it inside out, then flip it right side out, and iron it down. Now put on your dress, dye your hair black and cut it short, or put on a wig, wrap your head in a bow like you're the Christmas present you are, and practice your Snow White mannerisms. Now to make sure it's extra secure, we're going to add another closure to the back. Just whistle while you work. <laughs> That's what I need you for. You'll learn, you'll learn. <laughs> Whistle well, you whistle well. You... After horsing around for a little bit with my tiny flying horse, I decided the wig was a bit too long for my liking, so I cut it. Then I used a blush brush to remove all my newly found chest hair. Then I opened the phone book, picked the first address I saw, and mailed the rest of the hair to that address. Just kidding, I, I would not do that. Here's the grand reveal, quarantine style. Now here's me trying to recreate the iconic Snow White and Bird pose with Gary. He'll love me soon, I swear. Just gotta wait for Stockholm Syndrome to set in. Now there was a really sweet moment in the woods when this lady happened upon me and she worked at Disney before, you know, it closed down and she started crying. You look absolutely stunning. Thank you so You're much. Thank, Thank you. You made my day more interesting. No, you made my day. You don't even know how much. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Then I went to a different area and tried to get a squirrel to come to me, but then this gentleman showed up and in the spirit of social distancing, I decided to call it a day, went home, rode my scooter around, and made this little memorial video for Secretary at the Stink Bug. Yeah.